Uh, this is Bruce at Bookmap, and we're going to go over that uh, 6.0. Uh, review the new features in the beta. Uh, risk disclaimer, trading futures involves substantial risk of loss is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, more information, go to bookmap.com. Uh, become a member there and you'll have access to a lot of the free resources and you can reach out to us at support at veloxpro.com for, uh, for anything. Uh, any issues you have, any comments, suggestions, uh, etc. Uh, you get a 14-day trial period um, with Bookmap. This is where you can find it. It's under the pricing tab. There is the basic and advanced version. Uh, you can see they are billed quarterly, and you see the respective prices. There, the difference between the two, uh, you can uh, find the complete list here. Uh, if you click on this link down here, it'll take you to a page where you see uh, all the different uh, features. Uh, however, the majority of them are with the add-on features here, okay, and the ability to trade right from the bookmap chart. Uh, now, any of you um, uh, quants out there or uh, uh, prop shops uh, are interested in a custom solution, uh, please contact us. We're happy to work with you to provide uh, something uh, specific to your needs. And um, let's see. Okay. Uh, the um, some of the resources. Uh, first off, in the handouts folder and in, in GoToWebinar, there you'll see there's four documents, and uh, those uh, those documents there, uh, we have the user guide, HFT intro guide. Um, the um, uh, these are all PDFs. Uh, there's a PDF for understanding the new API features in Bookmap. Uh, if you want to get accustomed to that. Uh, and we also have, uh, I've included a rule uh, a 575 from the CME uh, because um, this is very topical information. Uh, the um, uh, rule 575 uh, starts to, uh, well, it explains <laughs> very clearly a lot of the disruptive practices in the marketplace today uh, that is caused by algorithmic activity and Bookmap shows that information very clear, and we'll, we'll show examples of it. Uh, we do it every day, and um, uh, that's exactly what they're talking about. So this is uh, a platform uh, that uh, that can show that kind of information. You, can, you really can't see that uh, in other platforms. All right, so this is something uh, very particular. Uh, all right, uh, under the Education tab, in the portal, uh, this is where you can find all the recorded webinars. They are under this link here. Click on the playlist. It'll take you to the YouTube page. Uh, and you can see them all here. So here is yesterday's from Wednesday. Uh, the, um, uh, if you want the most uh, updated information, this is where you're going to find it. It's under our Twitter feed. Uh, let me put this into the chat so you guys have that. All right, there you go. Uh, and if you want to follow us on Twitter, uh, you'll get the, the most recent updates uh, right away. Okay. All right, and you could also subscribe to our YouTube page as well uh, when any new videos are uploaded, uh, and that will be shortly for the uh, video for 6.0. All right, so uh, you could subscribe there as well. Okay, all right, so we're not going to go through, well, maybe we'll go through some of our process here that we go through daily uh, into macro view, microstructure, uh, and then the order flow in Bookmap, uh, and then reading that auction uh, in Bookmap. But I'm going to jump right in, and we're going to look at some of the uh, the main features here, uh, well, all of the features here in Bookmap 6.0. Okay. All right, so I've got the ES uploaded here, uh, and uh, let me uh, config the chart a little bit here. Okay. And uh, let me get my script up uh, from all the different features. Okay. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for your uh, feedback and comments. Okay. A lot of these new features are based on uh, on your feedback. All right. Uh, and um, uh, first of all, the um, a book map uh, is now 64-bit. So right off the bat, you're going to notice significant improvement. All right, not only in stability, but uh, the processing speed. So uh, that's uh, uh, number one. Number two, the Bookmap uh, advanced subscribers, uh, you now will have access to two instances of Bookmap. So uh, you, it's only for uh, accessing replay mode on another machine. 
So let's go through this scenario. Basically, if you are uh, connected to the live markets uh, in Bookmap, uh, but you want to review uh, and replay uh, data, uh, replay mode, maybe it's to debrief, to study, uh, whatever it is, uh, you can um, access Bookmap on another PC as well, only in replay mode. All right? It's been highly requested, and we're happy to offer that to you guys. Uh, to uh, uh, you know, so now now you can really uh, utilize a, a Bookmap even then, uh, during the downtimes in the market. All right. Uh, let's jump right into the correlation tracker. All right, and let, let me turn off. You're getting a sneak peek of the iceberg detector. I'm going to turn that off for the moment, uh, and uh, I'm going to jump right into the correlation tracker. All right, so let's click on that, and let me select it. Okay, and I'll enable it here. All right, uh, and um, I'll go through the settings in a minute. Let me uh, let me add a market here. Okay, so uh, actually I don't have too many open, uh, which is a pity, uh, but I will add gold to the, uh, to the equation. Okay, change the color here. Uh, let's change it to gold. All right, and thick solid line is fine for now. Okay, Oop. and I will use a reference point from the left of the chart. Okay, so now I've got gold on the chart. So um, uh, obviously this is going to be, um, well, it depends, uh, uh, you know, in the trading environment, but uh, uh, for the most part it is inversely correlated uh, to uh, the S&P E-mini, right? Uh, and we can see it here, okay, that inverse correlation. So uh, uh, if there's a, a risk in the marketplace, people jump into gold, right? And uh, look, look at that right here, you know, ni nice correlation. What we're looking for, uh, is um, discrepancies uh, in this correlation where this doesn't happen, right? Uh, depending on the uh, the trading um, uh, environment, and uh, that offers you uh, opportunity uh, to take advantage of that uh, price discrepancy uh, with the correlation tracker. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, really really nice feature here, um, and um, uh, you you can. Uh, let me uh, zoom a little bit vertically here. Okay, just left click, hold, and drag a little bit uh, to get it within the chart range here, and you can see that correlation, right? Uh, and um, let's see, let me click on some of the other features here. So uh, you can have the price calculated on the last trade or uh, on the mid price. Uh, and uh, this is it's obviously gonna be with a line here. Uh, it's not a candlestick chart or anything like that. The reference point. This is making the calculation based on your zoom, okay? And uh, in this view here, uh, it's well, it's always on the left side of the chart within my chart range, okay? So if I zoom in, I'll close this, and uh, let's zoom in, okay? You can see the correlations being made here from the left of the chart, all right? So uh, it, it's con con constantly updating, basically. Uh, inverse is uh, uh, Geraldo is uh, it's it's not um, uh, not possible at the moment. This is the first addition uh, uh, here, so uh, uh, you're just going to see the the direct correlation. Okay. Mike, good question. How many can you show? Multiple. Uh, you will first need to open up the symbol. All right, and you need to start collecting data. So uh, I'll um, I'll do that. Uh, let me open up the uh, Nasdaq, for example. Okay, and uh, now I'm collecting data for Nasdaq. Okay, so now let's add that to the chart. Okay, so add another one. All right now Nasdaq's available. All right, and uh, let's uh, give it a color that we can see here. We'll give it pink. Okay, and uh, and there it is. Okay, so there's my uh, um, Nasdaq market. Right now, it's making the correlation from when I just added it. it. This is all the data that I have so far for that for that Nasdaq. All right. Okay, so uh, next thing about the correlation tracker uh, is uh, reference points here. Uh, so you can always have it from the uh, from the left of the chart. However, there's a uh, a reset feature here, uh, and uh, let's let's um, uh, input uh, every five minutes. Well, let's input every two minutes in this view here. 
Okay. So this is uh, now this is, would be for uh, someone really really scalping the market, looking for some inconsistencies and discrepancies. But you can see here uh, on every um, uh, two minutes, uh, it will reset to zero here. Okay, and you'll see that correlation uh, again, and then it resets again at the two minute point, and then you'll see it again. All right. So um, it's uh, it's really up to you. Uh, so let me zoom out a little bit here, and. Uh, give it a little bit more shape to it. We'll, we'll use five minutes instead. All right, there you go. So maybe, maybe this is a little more helpful uh, looking for these discrepancies in uh, uh, the, the, the correlation between the two markets. All right, so uh, you can have multiple, uh, Mike. Uh, this is a great new feature. Uh, you, you guys, uh, I, I think you're really gonna find it advantageous for your trading. Uh, let's see, uh, what else? Any questions on the uh, correlation tracker? Okay, uh, not only can you change the uh, color, you can also change the line type. Uh, you know, to dotted line or dashed line, uh, make it thick or thin. And there you go. Uh, this is for the Nasdaq. So let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, and you can see the dashed dashed line here for the Nasdaq now. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, next feature. Uh, let's go over it. Um, order visibility. Okay. Let me turn off the correlations for a moment. All right. And let's zoom in here. Okay. So um, as you guys know, with the uh, one the one click trading is available for advanced subscribers only. Uh, but uh, let's say um, uh, you are using the uh, Bookmap Basic version, uh, and uh, you're placing your trades in a, in another platform. Okay, but you're you're connected to your live account uh, with the Basic version. Uh, now those orders that you take in that other uh, platform are going to be displayed within Bookmap. Okay, so this has uh, been a uh, requested feature uh, to be able to understand uh, your position in the market within Bookmap, right? And so uh, I'm just going to demo that. So it's basically going to look uh, something like this. Uh, if you have your your different um, uh, limit orders uh, in a, in another platform, uh, they're going to show up here within uh, within Bookmap. All right. Uh, if you make a, a uh, cancellation or if you move an order in that other platform it's also going to be displayed within bookmap okay all the uh, trading activity uh, is going to be based uh, in that uh, in this window here okay and, it, and you can see it's, it's recorded onto the chart as well historically which is an, a nice feature here all right let's uh, let's cancel all um, let's see a few more questions um, Yeah, yeah, exactly. Beats the correlation is great. It, it beats uh, watching uh, three domes I, exactly, exactly. So you'll have it all here uh, on the uh, on the screen. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's uh, jump into the uh, the next one. Okay, and um, we have um, uh, candlesticks now available on the chart. Okay, highly requested here by you guys. Uh, and um, uh, we can uh, change the uh, body width of the candle, right? I'm going to input 100, for example. I think the width is uh, maxed out at 100. And, uh, and then you have your time interval here, okay? Let's uh, input uh, five minutes, and, uh, and there you go, all right? So now you can see the candlesticks uh, directly on the bookmap chart. Now, this is going to give you guys really nice reference uh, to... Uh, what's going on in bookmap uh, within the markets because the candle uh, you know we're all accustomed to looking at it but now the magic is really going to uh, uh, happen here because you can see the traded volume uh, that's going to be on the candle uh, or that it relates to the candle as well as the heat map so I mean look at look at the signal we're getting right now I mean this is looking pretty good right we see our drop here very quickly majority of that volume where does it trade on this five minute candle well we know we look at the, we can look at the dots we know it's to the downside I'm looking for continuation to the downside okay we get that right uh, now we can integrate not only 
the traded volume here uh, in, into the uh, the candlestick, but also the heat map, right? So now we know where the, they are on the uh, on the bid. And look what it's telling us here. Look at the wicks here in the candles. Uh, look at the uh, uh, more volume starting to trade up above here. And, um, you know, they're getting aggressive on the uh, on the bid, right? So, uh, and look at the, the candle starting to take place here, okay? You would have known all of this information um, uh, earlier in Bookmap uh, by looking at some of the tails here and the candles. Uh, and um, uh, now you've got that, that this really nice overlay, okay? Yeah, it's a great feature, Geraldo. Um, I think you guys are going to like it. Uh, the, the new uh, candle being developed in real time, okay, you, you'll, you'll see it being made in real time here, okay, so it's, uh, it's constantly adjusting, all right. Um, let's see, I think that's it for the candles. Uh, pretty, pretty straightforward, uh, but, uh, you, you know, now, now you have a, a really nice reference, okay. All right. Okay, another uh, new feature here is uh, a time and sales window. Okay. So uh, it's going to be in a data column here is where it's going to be displayed. So we're going to right click here and I'm going to insert a new column. Okay, And then I'm going to right click in this column here and I'm going to select time and sales. All right. So now you have a time and sales window here. All right. Now, um, uh, the button here, uh, you, you can uh, hide some of the, some of the uh, filtering features. Um, you can also export your time and sales here, uh, but you can also pop it out uh, into a separate window. Okay, so this is a really nice feature. Okay, so now you've got a separate window of your time and sales, make it bigger, uh, and you can filter for it. Okay, so you can, uh, the minimum size you want to see or the maximum size you want to see, uh, and, and you'll get your filters here. All right. Uh, and uh, you want to show all, you want to show all the buys, or if you want to show all the sells. Okay, you've got all of that here. All right, and um, uh, there's going to be a new uh, feature for the time and sales coming shortly. Uh, so uh, I think you guys will be really excited about that, and uh, I can only uh, whisper that much at the moment. All right, so uh, anyway, for those of you who love your time and sales, you've got it now, uh, and um, and that's, uh, that's that. Uh, John, multiple time and sales. Uh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's based per chart. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, just, uh, in your other chart, um, just open it up and, uh, uh, you know, choose that for the, for the, uh, column data that you want to see. Okay. Good question. Okay, another highly requested uh, feature um, under the uh, automated automatic contrast configurations button up here. Let's click on that. Okay, uh, down here we have an option to show the black cutoff on the toolbar. So we'll check that, and uh, and then we'll close this window. And here it is. Okay, so uh, very quickly we we don't have to uh, always open it up. If you want to quickly adjust your chart uh, with the uh, black cutoff, there you go. So you can you can see that, and um, uh, now uh, uh, you know you don't always have to open up that window, All right? Okay, rolling along here. Uh, let's see here. There is. I'll go over the uh, uh, volume conditional uh, uh, reset of uh, data columns in a minute here. I'm going to jump right into the CVD uh, instead. All right. So the um, Click on Studies Configuration. Okay, we will scroll down here, or here it is, Cumulative Volume Delta. Okay, now you guys know we've already had this available for for a long time. Uh, however, we've uh, now have some nice advanced features, and I think you you're really going to like these. First of all, uh, you can show the zero line here. You can you can select the color you want for your zero line, whatever it is. Uh, if you want to make it gray, and and here it is. All right, so it always pops out. Um, now, some of the uh, issues that we had earlier with the uh, uh, cumulative volume delta, uh, we're displaying it correctly. Uh, every, everything was there. But, for example, note that I have, we, we have two different uh, cumulative volume deltas, right? I have the blue one and this green one, and based on different filters. And we, we've covered that for, you know, several weeks now. 
Um, but note that I have two different axes here uh, on the y, y axis. Uh, and uh, I have two different zero lines. Okay, so I'm, we're, we're plotting both of them here. Uh, and, and now you can't really read the relationship between the two. Okay, well now you can. Okay, so let's uh, open that up and use the same scale for all indicators. So we'll check that box. Okay, now it's going to be using the same y axis for, for all. Okay, uh, and, um, and now you can see the relationship between the two. All right, uh, another feature, uh, note that um, uh, this cumulative volume delta here is from the entire session since I opened up my book map and we're getting the display. Sometimes, for example, in the S&P or in the bonds, this is going to be in the several thousands, okay, like it is right now. Uh, it might even be in the tens of thousands, right? And then a little blip uh, in, a, in a crucial area you're not really going to be able to get much uh, information out of that in the CVD. Uh, well, now you can, all right? So uh, we have the uh, indicator range here. Uh, it's for the session right now. If I turn that to chart range, okay, and let's close that and let's zoom in just a little bit. Okay, uh, now, now is making the calculation for just the chart range. Okay, let me... Um, let me let me demo this here. I, I want to show. Uh, I can't really see my uh, axis here, so let's uh, let's make this one a little bit brighter. There we go. That's a lot better. Okay. So now you can see the axis here. All right, and uh, and you can see it's the same for both. Okay. Now let's zoom in re really closely. Okay. Now you can see how, how this is reflected here in the CVD. Okay. So now we have 2,500. Instead, before it was uh, 10,000, or you know, if I zoom out, uh, yeah, now it's in the tens of thousands, right? 10,000 up here. Okay. So uh, what this allows you to do uh, is to um, uh, really understand a range that you're looking for, and then you're looking for uh, any any sort of discrepancies in that uh, cumulative, cumulated um, volume delta, cumulative volume delta, okay? All right, and um, one more uh, on this uh, uh, advanced uh, feature here, a really nice one as well. Uh, we can split out the buyers and the sellers. Okay, let me go with uh, the, the uh, CVD for uh, overall. Um, and uh, let's split them out, okay? And I'm going to change the sellers into red. All right, there you go. What this allows you to do uh, is to uh, see uh, any sort of uh, discrepancies here in the aggressor classification of the volume and um, uh, and the any sort of divergences uh, in the in the price uh, structure. Okay, so uh, if you have, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, more sellers up in an area, but price is, has not dropped, well, you know, that, that's, that's giving you some insight to some of these areas, right? So you can split that out now, okay? And you can see the values are high here because uh, they have to be, right? You can't, uh, we can't have one negative and one positive. Uh, it, you won't get that relationship, okay? So uh, now, now you have it here. Obviously, the values are very high. They have to be. Uh, because uh, this is the cumulative um, uh, readout is always the uh, buy minus the sell. Okay, now it's just buy and it sell. Okay, outright. All right, so uh, you don't get that. Uh, if we had the uh, cumulative, it'd be like 2,000 or something. Right now, it wouldn't be. Uh, it would be buys minus the sells. Okay. All right. Okay, any questions? All right, that's the uh, the cumulative volume delta. Some really nice features there, uh, using that chart range and uh, in the same uh, axis uh, as you can see here. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, for the uh, for the bookmap advanced uh, users, okay, I want to show you a new feature as well uh, under the studies configuration the iceberg detector. 
Okay. This is, uh, I'm going to turn off the candlesticks here for the moment. Uh, and um, uh, this is a, a great new feature, right? Uh, the icebergs, uh, the way they were um, displayed previously is, uh, let me format this column here. So sorry, just a moment. Okay, they were the uh, and they are still displayed as a red number here. Okay, uh, in the uh, current order book as bars or bars as num and numbers. Okay, now it's displayed on the historical chart. Okay, so you can see exactly where these icebergs took place. Okay, one thing to note is uh, you might get different settings depending on your uh, or outputs depending on your data provider. Okay, different data providers, uh, uh, you'll, you'll get, uh, you know, different, slightly different data, and how it hits the book uh, is what's important here. Uh, you know, our iceberg detector uh, is uh, the same for everybody, right, but the data feeds aren't the same for everybody. Okay, so uh, you might see uh, slightly, slight variations in that. So just, uh, that's a reminder for you guys. But uh, this is a really great feature. Now you can see really, look at the, the heavy icebergs up in some of these areas here on the cell side, right? Okay, so maybe they're gearing up and starting to accumulate for a cell, a cell side trade, okay? 2,000, 3,000, uh, you know, 2,700, 2,000 here. Look, look at the other side here, right? Uh, we're, we're not seeing much, okay? Here's 15, 1,500, but, um, you know, right up into they're absorbing uh, uh, with using their hidden orders, and now they're starting to put a cap on it right at this area here, right where we broke from at 83. This is giving us some nice feedback right now, right, currently, right? Uh, you know, based on uh, absorption here with the icebergs uh, and then starting to show very high aggressive liquidity here, on the offer, I'm looking or anticipating for a retest of some of these areas uh, in, in the low lows that we just, just made, okay? So just putting these pieces together, uh, just like we do every day in our process, uh, we just have much more insight now uh, with exactly where these icebergs are taking place, okay? Nice stuff, really nice stuff. Uh, so. Um, uh, something I really love about this iceberg as well. Uh, let me hover over uh, this massive iceberg that we had up here. Okay, and we'll zoom in. Okay, and we, we start to break apart uh, all of this um, all of this data. Okay, just just like we do with the uh, volume dots. All right. So let's look at this uh, 533 for example, and I'll continue to zoom in here. Okay. Here it is, okay, here's what occurred, right? They're, you know, they continue to lift the offer right up into their hidden order, okay? Right in front of large liquidity here, okay? Up at uh, 83 on down to uh, uh, 82 and a half, okay? Beautiful stuff, right? So, um, uh, you know, you can continue to zoom in and we'll pull apart every single trade and we'll show you where that iceberg took place, right? I'm just just amazed by this. Um, so anyway, uh, let's uh, go back to the uh, live markets. Okay, we uh, we got our retest, or we got our yeah, we got our retest down here that we were just looking for. Okay, that already played out in real time, uh, and continue to look for more. Right. Well, here's another iceberg right here. You know, 2,282. Okay, so uh, there's there's still here on the sell side. Uh, let's uh, you know watch how this uh, this plays out, but uh, looking pretty good. Uh, let's see, how do I get simulated trading in the live market? Uh, no, Hamera, you'll have to. It'll have to be on the second PC. Okay. Um, Helgo, your, your question about the, the correlation tracker, um, uh, yeah, no, it, it is an, uh, an add-on, okay? And it's for the, it, you, you'll get it with the advanced subscription. Okay, great. All right, wow. Okay, some, some uh, questions flowing in here. Um, 
All right, let me continue on. I'll get to some of these questions. Uh, the um, uh, iceberg uh, detector, well, you can also filter now for some voice alerts on your iceberg detector. Right. Great new feature. We can enable voice alerts here. Uh, and uh, the the um, uh, output here, uh, it's it'll you can see here we have dollar sign instrument dollar sign side and then ice and then dollar sign size. So the output is going to be uh, it's going to read the e, the es. It's going to say es, okay, and then it's going to say you know cell ice and then it's going to say the size of that iceberg that went off. Okay, you can input anything you want in here. Okay, so you can just get rid of this uh, instrument and you can just put an ES, uh, you know, here, or you can say S and P, whatever it is you want. You just input it here. Uh, if you don't want to hear ice and you want to hear, you don't want to hear that and you just want to hear size, well, there you go. All right, so now it's just going to be ES and size. Uh, and then you can filter for the size that you want. So minimum iceberg size, let's just input 100. Okay, so what's going to happen here in the output for this voice alert uh, is going to be um, uh, ES, uh, and then it's going to say uh, 100. Or if it's greater than 100, it'll say, you know, uh, 101, uh, or, you know, 250, whatever it is. Okay. All right. Uh, continuing on with the um, voice alerts. Okay. There is a large trade alert that's available here. Okay. You can enable it here, and it's the same thing I just went through. It gives you the, um, uh, it says trade, and then it says the in instrument. Okay, let me disable it for the moment. Okay, because uh, I'm getting lots of uh, uh, automated uh, voice alerts here. Uh, you can input um, whatever it is you want here uh, for your alert, uh, but the nice thing is for your minimum trade size. Okay, so if you're looking for just big trades, like let's say a thousand, okay, you just input a thousand, click apply, and you will only get a voice alert if that trade is for a thousand contracts or more. All right? Okay, uh, let's see, went through iceberg, went through voice alerts. Uh, notes, okay, another new feature uh, is the notes and um, uh, custom notes, okay, so uh, it's, you, you guys know that uh, custom notes is already uh, in a column, well, let's right click here, we're going to insert a new column, okay, and then I'll right click again, and let's select notes, okay. Now, this is, the custom notes is the regular notes that we're, we're all uh, uh, already used to. Uh, the cloud notes, though, this is the new feature. Okay, what this allows you to do with the cloud notes, uh, we'll right click here now again and we're going to uh, choose settings uh, and uh, you can see here actually I have my cloud notes already set up with uh, with FT71 uh, and he, he has it available from uh, his download uh, already here but you can input uh, whatever it is you want. All right, uh, you'll just upload your um, uh, Excel file or your uh, Google Sheets file uh, up on, uh, you know, in your Google Drive or, um, you know, wherever it is you want to upload it to. Uh, maybe it's uh, your um, uh, Dropbox.com. And when you make your um, uh, edits on that uh, Excel file, uh, then those uh, in real time, uh, they will be reflected here within the custom note or the cloud notes column. Okay, and you can have it update on an interval. Okay, so you just uh, input your interval here by it's a number of minutes. Okay, great new feature. Uh, so uh, uh, you don't always have to import and export your notes. You just make your quick change uh, or additions, whatever it is, uh, and um, uh, and then that uh, will be reflected in your cloud notes. Okay. Uh, for any of you uh, who are providing services for others as well, this is a great service for sharing. Okay, so uh, uh, that's uh, now available for you as well. Okay, okay, covered just about everything except uh, the um, uh, the conditional resets. All right, and let me widen out the columns. All right, now if we right click in a column, 
Okay, we've already had resets available for quite a while. Okay, we can reset the column right away, right here, right? And uh, and it'll start, uh, uh, you know, to uh, show traded volume that takes place. Okay, this is the CVP column, okay, the chart range volume profile. Okay, so that's uh, uh, what we're looking at here. And I just reset it. Now I can get it back again uh, if I go back to my uh, uh, chart range. Uh, and let's right click again. Okay, and let's choose reset, and uh, let's configure the, the the resetting. Okay, this has all already been available here. You can schedule your resets. Uh, you can have it uh, take place on uh, on an interval, okay, by hours, minutes, and seconds, uh, or you can have it uh, uh, take place at a specific time during the day. All right, uh, that's already been available. What's new here is the conditional reset. Okay. So if I check this box here, uh, and I have the uh, selection here from the dropdown for uh, either one second, these are milli milliseconds, right? So uh, this is one second, uh, two and a half seconds, or five seconds. What this allows you to do uh, is you're looking for uh, your, um, your volume to accumulate uh, within a specific area, and um, uh, that's what you're, you're studying. Okay. Now, if the condition here is if price goes outside of your range and then trades right back into it, uh, this is going to reset, right? Uh, that's that's the way that um, uh, you know the uh, uh, you know the reset uh, will occur. Well, that that won't happen anymore uh, based on your um, uh, your input here. If you um, wait for us, if it if that um, action takes place. Uh, within a second here, or let's go with the you know two and a half seconds. Okay, it goes outside of the range and then comes back in within two and a half seconds. Um, then um, uh, it won't uh, it won't reset. Okay, if it's more than that, uh, then it will. Okay, so then you have basically one of the concepts we go through during the webinars is time and acceptance. Okay, and that's basically what this is. But this is for uh, those of you who are really uh, uh, you know, homing in on very, very specific ranges. Okay, so uh, great new feature uh, that allows you uh, to, um, uh, 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 you know, still retain the the, the pertinent vol volume uh, in your column uh, that you're studying. All right. Okay, let me deselect it and uh, let me uh, let me reformat this. Okay, now there's one more available as well, uh, and that is the um, if we reset here and we check uh, double click, okay, reset on double click. Okay, so if I double click up above the uh, the bid, the best bid or the best offer, okay, so if I double click above the uh, uh, the best offer, okay, uh, it is resetting that uh, that value. Okay, and uh, if I double click below uh, on the best bid, it will reset that value as well. Okay. All right, more enhancements on this to come, uh, but um, uh, anyway, that's uh, that's what the reset is. Okay, and let me uncheck that, and let's go back to our CVP. All right, guys. Well, let's uh, let's let's input some uh, candlesticks on this, and uh, let's put the the whole picture together, right? Because uh, these tools. Now we have a lot more tools to, to gauge our decisions, okay? Look at our candle, okay? Big down candle. We had volume trading at the lower lows here, okay? We saw liquidity come back in. Uh, we're looking for a return back up into these areas here. We did get that, but we noticed something different, okay? Th this all happened during this session, all right? Um, uh, we noticed that the absorption here uh, with the iceberg detector, a lot of absorption here, okay, into, and then they came in and they got aggressive here on the uh, on the offer, right, and uh, we're putting the pieces together, right, we had our initial down move, we had our pullback here, okay, back to where we broke from, we saw absorption here uh, with the iceberg detector all the way up into this area here, and they're still um, uh, absorbing uh, on the sell side, right. I'm ex and, and we, you know, we were looking for this move, 
right? We are anticipating it based on just very objective information we're seeing in the chart. Okay, and uh, we're looking for continuation to the downside. Uh, so uh, now we have a lot more visuals here, and it's going to give you a lot more insight to what's going on. Okay, so uh, uh, anyway, uh, that uh, pretty much wraps it up. If you guys have any more questions here. Uh, Kurt, I, I hope I answered your question there about how do you trade with this. Uh, you know, we're, we're putting uh, uh, the pieces together here. Uh, most of you are uh, very familiar, most all of us are very familiar at looking at candlesticks. Okay. So uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we now have a understanding of the candlesticks, the traded volume, the, um, uh, the icebergs that are going off in some of these areas, uh, and most importantly, we understand the, uh, the auction. Okay. We understand, we have that, that reference here. Well, the 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 um, uh, factual uh, data are right in front of us uh, of this auction, and we can see exactly how the market is playing within this auction. Okay, this is a view inside uh, to what's going on. Really, um, uh, <laughs> it's an inside view of what's going on outside of the traded volume. Right, we can see the the relationship here uh, in the auction and what's going on. Okay. So this is a, a, a really important question, Kurt, so I, I hope that helps answer your question. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let me get to some of these more, more of these questions here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jimin, I, I set you up with a um, with a trial. You have the you should have the advanced. Okay, you'll you'll just need to um, what, as soon as this is released, you can uh, you can upgrade or up update, uh, and uh, down, you'll just need to log in and download. All right. Uh, Geraldo, thank you. Yeah, nice comment there. Um, yeah, we're we're really giving you a, a view here. Um, I mean, this is a complete market view, right? Or all all the data here is not it's not hidden. It, it's all in front of you, right? And uh, and just put the pieces together, like uh, Kurt was asking, okay? Uh, and, and we did just with this this little a couple of little trades. We saw this one occur, this little pullback to the upside. We saw the absorption. We saw the high liquidity here, looking for the continuation to the downside. Okay. And I just noticed another huge icebergs are go, you know going off here on the uh, uh, on the uh, bid though. So uh, uh, you know are they going to continue to absorb down here? Well, that we we don't know yet, right? Um, but uh, we are testing. We're getting kind of a, a a double double bottom at least right now. And we need to continue. This isn't finished. We need to see the follow through here. Are they still? Where did they 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 started buying right around here at uh, 2380? Well, we've come down lower. I would say, well, it looks like these guys might get turned upside down, to be honest. Uh, we have 500 here. Okay, I, I don't see them. They're actually buying at lower areas. Okay, so uh, these guys have the potential to get really run over here. Or maybe they're just covering, you know. Uh, maybe they're just, uh, uh, you know, getting uh, getting out of some of their positions and, and taking some risk off. All right. Um, that's uh, another way of reading this. Right. But uh, they're still aggressive here at 81, as we can see very clearly. All right, let me get to some of these more questions here. Uh, yeah, uh, Pete, the uh, iceberg uh, alert there, uh, you can have it uh, alert for um, any iceberg size that you want. You can filter for it. Uh, Homera, you're you're already subs subscribed to the advanced version, so you just need to wait until we re re release this uh, later today. Okay, look uh, look for your email or, or subscribe to the Twitter, like I was uh, 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 requesting there or uh, suggesting. Uh, that would be probably the best. Uh, 
Um, John, the, uh, the alerts right now, there are many more alerts to come. The um, alerts that we have right now, uh, voice alerts are available for the um, iceberg as well as large trades. Uh, Anthony, uh, I'll, I'll have to get back to you on your question there um, for the lifetime. <laughs> Is this legal? <laughs> Um, it's just, uh, it's a great, I, I, I really appreciate that question, Mike. Um, you know, it's just all from your data provider, right? Uh, we're just, uh, we're taking that data. It's always been there uh, and we're visualizing it for you in a really unique way uh, to, to really give insight to what's going on in the market. Live trade subscription time, time frame. Uh, Robert, not, not sure exactly what you mean there. Paul, the recording will be up in a couple hours. Harvey, okay, I can go over an iceberg. Um, uh, I would um, uh, really encourage you in the handouts folder, uh, this would probably be the best way um, is to uh, download the um, HFT uh, intro guide. There's a really nice uh, illustration that goes over an iceberg. But basically what an iceberg uh, order is, it's a hidden order type. It, uh, larger players use it because they don't want to show the liquidity uh, in the book. Right? So if there's a high level of liquidity, as we can see here at 81 right here, Okay, we have 1,337 contracts. Okay, well, let's say there's there's a larger player there as well who, who wants to get an order uh, filled for another 1,000. Well, that would make this 2,300. Okay, it's going to scare off everybody. They don't want to do that. So they'll, they'll, they will um, use a hidden order type to provide liquidity at this price level, uh, but they won't, it won't show in the limit order book. Okay, but we can capture that with the iceberg algo that we offer, and uh, that number is the difference between the volume that had traded at that price level at that time versus the liquidity provided. Okay, so more volume traded than what was provided here, and that's how we can discover the icebergs. All right. Uh, John, it will be available later for download. You'll just log in to bookmap.com and you can download. Now, it is beta, so um, uh, just be aware of that. Uh, Air is, yeah, you, one-click trading is available. You will need the advanced uh, bookmap subscription. Yeah, Kurt. Um, okay, so yeah, you need a lot more insight into the software. Yeah, I mean we're we're showing things here uh, as uh, as Mike had pointed out or others had pointed out as well. Um, a lot of transparency here in the marketplace. Okay, so uh, this is uh, something that um, uh, you know you you will need to learn. Uh, you will need to learn and understand liquidity. Okay, so for example, I'm going to just take off um, the um, uh, let's see here the volume dots, okay, and the heat map, okay, and maybe maybe I'll just take off the best bid and offer. No, I'll leave that. All right, but Kurt, this is this is something you're probably pretty familiar with, right? Okay, so. Uh, it's just a candlestick chart. Okay. Now, uh, let me yeah, let me take off the best bid and offer as well. Okay. So here's your candlestick chart, and I also have the icebergs on it, right? Uh, but um, pretty familiar with that. Um, now, in in Bookmap, let me take off the candles, and then we'll we'll put back the best bid and offer. So here's just the best bid and offer, right? Uh, and um, uh, I'm just going to go through this very quickly for you, though. 
uh, you're pretty accustomed to that view, I imagine, as well. Okay, now let's show the volume. Okay, whoops, not volume bars, volume dots. Okay, now I'm showing you where the volume took place on the best bid and offer. And that's all we're showing, right? Best bid and offer and volume. Okay, just to simplify it. So, uh, you know, because I know that chart can look rather busy, but uh, we're just looking at that, right? And uh, now uh, let's uh, let's put on the heat map. Turn on the heat map. Now what we're looking at here, the, all of this this heat map uh, information here. And let me let me bring up the black cutoff a little bit. All right, uh, is where they were lined up to bid and offer. So we're looking at the auction. I think the big hurdle is understanding the auction. Okay. So um, uh, anyway. Um, uh, uh, please reach out to me at support, and, and uh, I'll, I'll show you a lot of the resources to go through uh, and um, uh, how to uh, to integrate this into your trading, right? But um, uh, you know, this is a very very transparent view of the market uh, is what we're showing you here in Bookmap, all right? Okay. All right, Pete. Yeah, you use one of our competitors, but uh, we're showing much more information. Well, th this is a good point, and it kind of um, uh, will uh, coincide to what Kurt is uh, 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 talking about here. Uh, you know, we came from this environment. This is our story. Uh, we developed algos for the high-frequency environment. Okay, this is how these markets trade, uh, and this level of transparency is required uh, for uh, that high-frequency environment. Okay, so. Um, uh, that's why uh, uh, we're able to show you all of these different features, okay? Because uh, this is important uh, important data that offers uh, an unparalleled level of transparency. Uh, like Mike was saying, basically, it seems like it's illegal. Um, let's see. Wow. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me let me let me get through the questions here, and uh, I won't digress uh, further. Yeah, it's called Bookmap X-Ray for a reason. <laughs> uh, appreciate the comments here. Uh, let's see. Now, if I don't get to your question, uh, just let me know uh, in support. Just reach out to us at support at veloxpro.com. Okay. Uh, sorry, we're just impacted today with a lot of a uh, lot of questions, and we're going over time here uh, just so I can answer you guys' questions because I know this is important to you. Um, Okay, Robert, uh, I guess uh, maybe you're talking about the subscription here to the uh, uh, new beta version. It, it'll be available soon. Okay, look for it uh, in the email. It'll be coming out soon. Uh, Kurt, yeah, just keep, you know, I, I would just um, encourage you to um, keep asking questions. You know, come back. Um, and uh, watch uh, watch some of these webinars, and um, uh, and then we do have a process. Uh, in fact, you might want to watch yesterday's webinar. I went through the replay mode process uh, in in detail. Uh, I would encourage you to do that uh, because you're really going to see some uh, uh, you know put the pieces together uh, by using some of the order flow video snippets that we have uh, available uh, as as. Uh, uh, they're very short videos and uh, understand that some of this phenomena and some of the reads that we were just, you know, putting together here. Okay, look at look at the icebergs here now on the other side. Okay, we're getting a pretty pretty big battle shaping up between bears and bulls. Okay, on both both sides here, right? Um, uh, anyway, yeah, Kurt, just reach out. Uh, we'll we'll help you out. Right? Um, let's see, Greg. Wow, nice update. Uh, second instance replay was good enough <laughs> thank you thank you very much Greg uh, that's great yeah thanks Seth excellent um, ah, okay so uh, Robert uh, you have, uh, please reach out to support at Veloxpro and we'll get to uh, some of the API uh, questions is what you're asking about okay uh, no problem there Okay, Seth. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah, hit me up at support. I, we're, we're really uh, uh, quite impacted, Seth. So uh, support at veloxpro.com and, um, and then I can, uh, I can reach out to you. Uh, Kurt, I'm showing you a real example in real time. I mean, we do this every day in the webinars. Uh, that's why, you know, the, the, the book map uh, webinar is entitled, uh, you know, Live Order Flow. Uh, to, to, to put these pieces together uh, in the live market because, um, you know, that's how you're going to use it, right? And I'm showing you how, how it can be used. Um, and uh, we, we, we hope that that's helpful for you guys. Any, any suggestions and, uh, you know, be happy to, to cover anything else. Okay. Okay. It looks like I'm caught up uh, on all the emails. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, look for uh, the email coming out soon. Uh, it'll be available uh, to you. Um, and, uh, and then you'll uh, just log into bookmap.com. Uh, and then under your user portal page, you'll see the release notes. Uh, the the, the uh, user guide has been updated as well. Uh, so that might be the first point to, uh, uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, uh, read the, uh, the user guide that will be available uh, there, uh, as well as a video, short video will be included in that email that, that covers the main points here that we've gone over. Okay, I've gone, I've exhausted uh, this a little bit more than the, uh, a lot more than the video, uh, so, so we can answer your guys' questions, okay? Um, yeah, Joe, about the automated strategies, um, I believe that will be released as well, uh, and that's what uh, Robert was talking about, but I, I do want to check up on that first, okay, uh, if we're set ready for that, you know, to, to set that up for you guys, okay. All right. Um, all right, well, let's call it a day, and uh, we will uh, we'll catch up with you guys uh, tomorrow. So uh, yeah, look for the uh, for the email, and if you guys want to give the beta uh, version a try, uh, you can download it and play around with it. Okay, all right, thanks guys. Take care.